In this episode of my Dial M for Medics series, I'd like to cover a very important aspect of the Street Medics Handbook, something we plan for and hope will never happen. Arrest. Nobody wants to be arrested, especially with the risk of police brutality constantly looming over everyone's heads. I wanted to make a short and sweet video that could give you the basics in regards to the arrest itself, how to stay calm, your rights, and the aftermath. I urge anyone, before we begin, to consider their level of comfort when interacting with a potentially dangerous situation and the police. If you choose not to participate as a street medic in this situation or even as a protester because you feel scared of arrest, violence, and harassment, it's completely fine. You can help out in other ways, and just because you attend a demonstration doesn't mean you will encounter police violence or arrest, though it is a sad reality for many. Nevertheless, let's start the episode. First and foremost, and I've mentioned this in the previous episode, is to have a lawyer's number written somewhere on your body, such as the one to the National Lawyers Guild or to a local lawyer who you know and trust. Try to put it in a place where you can see it, but the police cannot, such as one on your rib cage beneath your shirt. If you are strip searched, that's a totally different situation, and you won't be able to hide the number. If you are an immigrant and are not in the country legally, then you must take extra caution not to let this information come out, or ICE may be contacted and you could face deportation in the worst case scenario. As a precaution, you should notify someone who isn't attending the protest ahead of time to give them an outline of what they need to do in case you are arrested. Make sure your rights have been read to you as the officer is arresting you. If your bag is searched, take care not to put personal products in there or anything that contains personal info. In fact, I would travel as lightly as possible. Even if you have your medic bag, don't overpack or put things like your wallet, phone, ID, etc. in there. And as always, for the third time, no weapons. No tasers, stun guns, pepper spray, whips, guns, knives, etc. Especially as a street medic. This could give your whole team a bad rep. And as a side note, police might seem to like you more than the average protester if you're a medic, but don't push your luck as a non-combatant. Anyway, Give your bag to someone who isn't being arrested if you can, or leave it somewhere safe with other medics. Your bag should be given back, keyword being should, but if items are missing then you're going to need to file a complaint to get them back. No guarantees though. People who wear bras can try and stuff something super small in there or to take with you like a um, medication bottle, but you better have a prescription for it because if you don't, or it's not in its original bottle, that won't look good and the cops might think you're smuggling drugs. This also holds water if you try to put them in your underwear. Let's move on to restraints. Handcuffs, especially tight plastic ones or zip ties, can cause nerve damage. Neuropathy can manifest short term as tingling, numbness, burning, and shooting electric-like pain. If you begin to feel these symptoms acutely, request an officer to either change your cuffs, remove them, or if your hands are cuffed behind your back, to put them in front of you. Try not to move around too much. When the cuffs are removed, have a street medic colleague document any symptoms of neuropathy. After the interrogation, see a medical professional like your PCP to check out the injuries. For people who have chronic health problems, tell the cops about your illness up front. However, no guarantees on sympathy if your officer is particularly callous. Speak up on someone else's behalf, uh, granted you've been given their permission, of course, if they start to have a medical emergency. If the officer or officers don't respond, 
Keep asking them. Document this behavior if the officers neglect to get help. While you're detained, stay as calm as possible. If a cop tries to harass you, intimidate you into giving information, or threatens you with violence, then do your absolute best to stay silent, calm, and reassure others who are being interrogated or feel panicked to do the same. Talk casually to others if you are with them in order to ease their nerves. Cops may lie to you in order to get you talking. See my Dictate, Dissect, and Discuss episode about no comment, which encompasses a lot of these same tactics. Do not reveal the details about any activities you've engaged in. They might try to negotiate with you, saying you'll be let out sooner if you confess. Don't. Detectives have one job to detect. Don't do their job for them or make it easier. Police will most certainly get snappy if you deny them info over a long period of time. Document any incivility while getting the officer or officer's name and badge numbers. When you're released, take some time to decompress and de-stress. Talk to a trusted companion, whether that be a friend, another street medic, a partner, etc. Some street medics and protesters have dedicated groups of people running jail support. These people will usually consult with legal representatives, pay bail, wait outside the jail, take phone calls, and arrive with food, medications, or take children in for care in the interim. Try and make connections with an arrest support group if you know one. Get some much needed sleep but be aware you could have some traumatic recall from the event that might make sleeping difficult. Other symptoms that can manifest are bursts of anger, memory loss, lack of concentration, and hypervigilance. Talk to a therapist afterwards if the mental and emotional fallout becomes too heavy to handle alone. When you're at home, take pictures of any injuries you sustained for future reference. Please call the International Critical Incident Stress Hotline at 410-750-9600 if you need immediate support in the aftermath of your arrest. No matter your unique arrest situation, I hope these guidelines have been helpful to you. If you found this advice useful, I would like to thank you very much for sticking around. This concludes episode four of Dial M for Medic. I hope to see you guys again soon. Take care and goodbye. Swing to the